Hi, this is Harish Bali from technofield.com. Do you want to plan event, make a survey or simply want to collect any data or information? Finding it boring and a tedious task. Let me guide you through a less known yet interesting and fun filled way to do so. The easiest way to do so is using Google Forms. If you connect your Google Forms to spreadsheet, the collected data automatically gets transferred to spreadsheet. To learn more, watch this video. If you are new to Google Forms, I would suggest you to watch the complete video at once and then maybe watch it again by following these steps in the tutorial. First go to Google Drive by typing drive.google.com on your browser. Once you are on your Google Drive, click on create and then go to forms. This is one way of creating forms. Another way of creating form is through spreadsheet. Go to spreadsheet. You can click on tools and create a form from spreadsheet as well. Google is in the process of introducing new Google Docs that has better look and a better user experience. Go to your drive and click on the cogwheel on the top right and go to experience the new drive. Once you are on the drive, click on this red button new, go to more and then Google Forms. This is the Google Form template. Before you start creating the form, you need to first select the question type from the range of options that are available. You can select text if respondents are going to provide you short answers, paragraph text if the answers are going to be long, multiple choices if respondents select one option among several options, check boxes if respondents are going to select many options as they may like, they can choose from a list also. They can choose the responses from a scale, for example on a 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 scale. There are options available to select a point from a two dimensional grid. Respondents can also select answers from a date. You can have a calendar picker to pick up the date. You can also choose time or a time duration. Let me draft a sample form and demonstrate the use of some of the question types that we just saw. But before that, let me show you how to check the privacy of the form. Go to file and then add collaborators. Before that, you need to give a name to the form. Since the example that I am going to show you is about personal information of the employee, so I am going to name it at personal employee inform information, save. So name of the form appears here. Privacy of the form is comes under who can access. So it currently belongs to me, so I am the owner. Done. Let's say HR of a company has lost basic employee info and they want to record that back again. The first question in the form that they can ask is employee ID. Help text is the text to support the question title if that's unclear but this is quite clear. Type of the question is text and click on done. To add the next question click on add item. Write the question here. Let's say they are interested to know marital status of employee. Marital status. Help text not required. This will have multiple choices. One can be married. unmarried done so we have got two questions in our form let's add couple of more questions let's add anniversary date click on add item choose the question type as date write anniversary date here uncheck this because you don't need the year of anniversary you just need the date and month done let's add another question add item there is a training this friday choose the time you wish to attend you can also add a help text like attendance is mandatory for this kind of a question you may need a drop down which is choose from a list option one can be let's say the timings are 11 am 3 p.m. 5 p.m. These are the three possible timings. One can attend a training. Done. Let's add another question in which the question type is paragraph. So let's choose paragraph as a question type and the question is two reasons why you love this organization. So the answer is expected to be a bit long. So you can go to advanced setting and set the 
data validation by checking the data validation box and choose the text limit for this particular answer so you can choose it as minimum 100 characters you can write the error text message here let's say the error text message here is write minimum 100 characters so if anyone writes less than 100 characters as an answer for this question he is shown this error message click on done let me write the last question to show you how grid works add a question let's say hr wants to take employees for a movie so the question is we are giving movie tickets to all employees for next three weekends what's what's your preference for next month so help text you can write as this movie is with spouse for those married question type is grid in the row label you can choose week 1 week 2 and let's say week 3 and in the column column you can have movie name 1 movie name 2 and let's say movie name 3 you go and save it before i show you how to share the form i would want you to try a couple of things for example you can change the theme of the form there's a change theme button at the top click on this this is the default theme you can just click on any of these and see the change that appears let's say this is city skyline click on it and it will have a cover photo on the form with change in the font color similarly you can go little down and try out some other let's say game night so it changes the cover so depending upon the audience and the type of questions you can decide the theme from a list of themes that are available there are a couple of more things that you can do you can go and insert the logo for example edit questions insert add image let's say i'll try and put my company logo here click on the image that you have just got and you can resize it make it small or surely not big because it's already covering the full page you can move it to the center or right depending upon your choice you can also write the title of the image let's say in my case it's technofair and you can also write the hover text image so if anyone hovers his mouse over the image he sees the hover text image so i am writing technofair there too and done you can move this image around anywhere on the form by simply drag and drop so i brought this down let's say if i want this image to appear at the bottom i can drag it and bring it to the bottom that can be easily done let's say your form has 20 questions and after every five questions you need a break insert go to page break and write let's say page 2 here description is optional done you can drag this wherever you want the page break to appear let's say you want page break to any appear after the anniversary question put put it there similarly you can go and insert page break after page 2 and page 3 there are a couple of more things you can do for example go to insert you can also insert a section header let's say of every five question is under a particular section type so let's say the first section header is personal individual questions done similarly another section header may be family linked questions or another section header may be questions about the organization let me now show you how to edit a question let's say i want to edit this employee id question go to the question and click on this add pencil shaped icon edit i don't want to actually edit a question but i want to put an advanced setting to it click on the advanced setting link check this box data validation to control the validness of the data that you are capturing google form provides a method called as regular expressions i'll show you how to use that through an example below data validation click on this drop down and click on regular expressions contains 
let's say your employee id starts with e and this e is case sensitive e capital and there it's a four digit number so put four dots after that three four so i have put four dots so anyone let's say if he writes e followed by three numeric numbers will be qualified as wrong and you need to put a error text here let's say i'm writing invalid employee id as an error message done you can also try out few form setting options at the top for example if you want to shuffle question order you can check this box if you want one person to fill up the form only once check this box but this would require login show progress bar at the bottom of the form pages check this box similarly go back to the bottom of the page your response has been recorded this is the customized message which you want to show to the respondents thanks for your information and time is the message that they will see when they submit the form you can read this and check the option that you want you can also view the live form at any point of time while you are filling up the form just by clicking on the view live form button on the menu it opens up the form you can have a look at it and then make changes and then have a look at it again let me now show you how to share the form with your audience there are two send form buttons one on the bottom left and one on the top right click on it the window that opens has got multiple options click on this embed and this is the embed code that you can use on your website so your form appears on your website another option that appears is click on this short url url shortens you can copy this url and send it through a mail if your form is about a general survey that's open for anyone you can also share it on a social media like google plus facebook and twitter for directly by clicking on these links similarly you can share your form directly on email id so let me share it on my personal email id you can also put a customized message so let's see subject is personal employee information and i can write a line please fill this up on priority preferably today and you can send it i have already got my mail id open in another browser let's go and check the mail there this mail has come with the subject personal employee information this is the customized message that we enter this is the link to the form click on the link yeah this is the form let me now fill this form e123 it's not accepting it's saying invalid employee id that's the error message we had set okay let's fill 1234 it's accepting because it is supposed to be e capital with four digits that's cool marital status anniversary date let's say i'm putting january 12th this is the page break that we had put after anniversary date continue this is the form name page 2 is the page title that we have put personal individual questions is the section header that we have put let's say i want to attend it at 11 am this is the loco and two reasons why you love this organization if someone writes a short answer i love this organization and writes nothing else which is less than 100 text we have fixed it shows write minimum 100 characters so one needs to complete 100 characters before he can go and submit the form similarly let's move to the next question we are giving movie tickets to all employees week 1 week 2 week 3 This looks very odd. Why should form allow the user to fill the same movie for all the three weeks? I'll tell you how to correct that. Go back to the form, edit the form. When you are on that question, click on Advanced Settings. Check this box. Limit to one response per column and write the error text here. Let's say I am writing, you can't watch the same movie again, and then. save it okay now let's go back to the form and refresh it i filled these dates continue we were on the second page okay let's put dots here so that it accepts Now if you go and select the same movie again it will show error you can't watch the same movie again 
so you will need to select another movie for the second week and another movie for the third week try selecting it like this and it will show an error okay submit the form thanks for your information and time this is the customized message we had set let me now show you how to view responses on a spreadsheet go back to the form one response has come click on view responses from the drop down the spreadsheet that will open will have the response if this form was sent to let's say 200 500 people then all the responses would automatically get captured in the spreadsheet you can also try out other things go back to the form from the responses menu click on summary of responses so without going to spreadsheet you will see the responses in a graphical manner close this again to the responses and you can change the response destination for example currently it's linked to a new spreadsheet you can connect it to a existing spreadsheet and give it a name cancel go back to responses you can also go and unlink the form from the spreadsheet by clicking on this link let me share two or three important frequently asked question with regard to google forms one question that i see quite often on google forums is can i capture respondent's email address or name without asking him to enter it in the form answer to that is you should be google apps user for that and responder has to log in with his gmail account at the time of filling of the form otherwise there is no alternate but for asking him to fill his email id on the form itself second question that i see on the forums is can i receive a notification on my email every time someone fills in the form yes you can do that under notification rules what you can do is you can go to the linked spreadsheet you can go to tools and then notification rules notify me at my mail id when a user submits a form check that box notify me with daily digest or straight away when someone fills it so i am putting it daily digest and save it done so now if anyone submits a form i'll get a daily digest of the same on my mail id another important frequently asked question that i know of in google forms is can i send an email of personal thank you message to the respondents answer to that is you will need to capture email address of the respondents in the form and then use a add on like yet another mail merge to do so i did a tutorial on how to use mail merge in gmail i have put a link of that in the description below after you follow the tutorial all you need to do is compose the message in the draft of your gmail save it as a draft go to add on like this i already have yet another mail merge installed as a add on which you can do after going through the tutorial and then go to configure form submission notifications you can set the notification rules let's say you set notify addresses submitted by the form since i don't have the draft as of now so let's say if my draft was about 27th october performance and this will have the email address so while i don't have it right now because i have not captured email address so let's assume if this was email address i'll go and save it you have successfully set up your notification rules your form is ready for submission rest is all explained in the tutorial last frequently asked question for this tutorial is can i use captcha on forms answer to that is yes one of the major features of google forms is regular expressions we shared an example of regular expression in this tutorial it is very powerful tool and can build stuff like captcha email if a person did not fill a valid email address then user will not be able to submit the form each question type has its own validation settings currently only four type of questions support validation first is text second is paragraph text third is check boxes and fourth is grid i have also put a link about regular expressions in the description below which you can read that will help you enhance your experience on google forms i hope you have enjoyed watching this video using google forms is definitely going to make your life whole lot easier if you have liked the video do put in your comments below the description also subscribe to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button in front of your screen also watch my other videos on dropbox and google drive thanks for watching